Bhagavati Shuchi Putra Atra Surupam Rupam Tasyakraja Puri Puri Maturi Secondly, I have my, my pranam thousands of times at the lotus feet of my Param Guru Dev to Sila Prabhupada, to Sila Parampujapad, Sila Bhaktivai Bhapurika Swami Maharaj, all the eternal Satparakar Bhanda, eternal associates of Prabhupada, Sila Bhakti Sansa Thakur and all of us, Sri Rupa Nanga Gaudiya Guru Pranam. And finally, I have my pranam to all the Samud Vaishnavas and Vaishnavas, Vanchakal Guru Vista, Vas Indu Vyavaj, Pakitanam Bhavani Pyo, Vaishnavi Pyo Namo Namo. the causes myself, Sri Guru and Guru. The 
waves of joy of Sri Krishna Janmastani Ananda Mahotsa was still flowing. In Sri Bhagavad Gita, Sri Krishna has said, Janma Karma Chame Chame Dipyam Egam Yoveti Tattvataha Chattva Deham Punar Janma Neti Maam Eti Sol Janma. One who knows in Tattva, not theoretically, but one who knows actually the transcendental nature of my birth and activities does not, upon leaving his body, come back to this world. Chakdwa deham, giving up the body. Puna, again, does not come back to this world, but Krishna says, Mameti Sarjana, he comes to me. Our Acharyas have also interpreted this verse in another way. Chaktva Deham Na. No, not when he gives up his body, but as soon as a devotee realizes the transcendental nature of my birth and activities, Eti Maam, Eti Sarjana, he comes to me. So you don't have to wait until you pass away. If someone realizes the transcendental nature of see Krishna's past lives, then they come to Krishna in that life. So, Ajopisana Vyayatma Bhutanam Ishwaropisam Prakritinswam Adhistaya Sambhavami Atma Mayaya Krishna said, I am unborn. Avyayatma and my body is never deteriorating. My form is unchanging, eternally perfect. I am the controller of all the world and all the living entities. When the living entities take birth, they are Jiva Shakti, Tatasta Shakti, and they become covered over by Prakriti, material energy. But Krishna says, Prakritim Swama Dishtaya. When I come to this world, I am not interacting with the material energy. I am always situated in my own Swarup Shakti, internal potency. Sambhavami Atma Mayaya. I appear. Atma Mayaya. Maya means karuna, mercy. I appear out of mercy. And here also Atma Maya means yoga Maya. I appear yan marchli lo pai kasu yoga maya balantasha eta grihitam by the power of to display the power of my yoga Maya. Vismapanam swasat sobagade param param bhushna bhushnangam and my beautiful human-like form is so astonishing that even Lord Narayan and Mahavishnu and my expansions, they become astonished seeing that form. Even myself, seeing my own reflection, I become astonished. It is so beautiful. So, Krishna eternally exists in the Nitya Dham. That is Krishna's Aprakat Lila, unmanifest pastime. And once in a day of Brahma, Asta Vinksa Chatur Yuga Dwar Pare Rasheshi, Brajaya Sahai Krishna Lira Pakashi, at the end of the 28th Dwarpa Yuga, in the reign of the 7th Manu Vaivasvata Manu, then see Krishna becomes Prakat, manifest with all of his Braj Parikars. Krishna has said, 
भाई कुंतक दे नहीं जे जे लीला से से लीला करी पोचते मोर चमत्कार चमत्कार द मीनिंग इज दिस इन द भाई कुंतक and beyond my kunta i am eternally performing my pastimes but i will appear in this world and perform pastimes which are even not found in vai kunta vai kunta de nahi ye ye lila pacha and those pastimes that, that i will manifest in this world which are even not found in vaikuntha say say lila karibo i will do such pastimes jate more chamatkar that even i am amazed so how wonderful is this occasion the festival of janmashtami sri krishna's appearance in this world it has some specialities which are not only wonderful for us but wonderful for krishna also mm-hmm. even though lord brahma and mother earth and the devatas they came to the shore of the ocean of milk and they prayed to kirdaka shai vishnu but it was krishna who answered in the heart ridakash in the sky of the heart of lord brahma because though vishnu appears in the world to establish dharma and destroy the demons but the time had come for krishna's appearance so krishna would manifest and vishnu would enter into him now this siddhanta that this krishna who appears on janmashtami at midnight on the eighth day of the dark fourth night at the time of rohini nakshatra and harsha yoga in badrapad in the year 3228 bc that krishna who appears he is actually swayam bhagavan the supreme personality of godhead you have heard it and he said yes i have heard it but actually it's a very great secret who understand it sampradaya vihina ye matoste nishvala par mata pata kala upavishanti chatvare sampradayena it is said that if you unless you receive a mantra in a bona fide sampradaya that mantra will not give the fruit and the fruit is the prayer love for god and the other day here in padma purana is writing in the future there will be four vaishnav sampradayas hmm? rudra sampradaya sri sampradaya vishnu uh, vishnu uh, swami sampradaya that is chatushan sampradaya and the brahma sampradaya so if you go to the other sampradayas though they are bona fide hmm? like ramanuja sampradaya but they don't understand that krishna is the supreme personality of godhead they think that narayan is bhagavan and krishna is is vilasarup not only that oh for thousands of years in the dwapara yug treta yug and satya yug and for a thousand cycles almost all the sages and rishis they think that lord narayan is supreme and krishna is his vilas murti not only that you can see in the beginning of the third canto of shrimad bhagavatam udav krishna has just left this world become unmanifest and he sent him sent him udav to but the kashra to the himalayas he told on the way you will meet with vidura and my prayer is she will be there also so 
Buddha was traveling and he came on the bank of Jamuna in Vrindavan, in Gyan Guduri. And he met with Vidur. Now Vidur had been on Parakrama visiting many holy places. And he did not know the news that Krishna and the Yadu dynasty had become unmanifest from this world. So when he met Uddhav, he asked, Oh, and what is the news of Krishna and the Yadu dynasty? And when Uddhav heard this question, he began to cry. His hairs were standing on end, he was trembling. And he went into Samadhi for 48 minutes. Vidura was very happy seeing the ecstatic symptoms. In Uddhav, he said, oh, really has a very high class of praying for Krishna. And Uddhav, in his trance, he went to transcendental Dwarka in the spiritual world. So, Shukadeva Goswami is saying, Shanaka Bhagavad Loka. Slowly, slowly, after 48 minutes, Uddhav slowly came back into external consciousness. And smiling and wiping the tears from his eyes, he looked at Vidura. He was smiling because there in transcendental Dwarka, Krishna said to him, Oh, why don't you answer the question of, of Vidura? So now he was opening his eyes and seeing God. Oh, Krishna loves you so much. He told me to come back. So Uddhav began to speak. And there are many verses. And recently we have been discussing some of those verses. And today we want to discuss some different verses that he said. So one of the things that Uddhav said is, he said, what can I say? The world has become unfortunate because the sun of the world has set. Krishna has disappeared along with the Yadu dynasty. So now we have been all cast into the darkness. The meaning is that when the sun goes down, then the lotus flowers with them. The Chakrabak birds start crying. And the dacoits and thieves and rakshasas all become happy and begin to do their nefarious activities. So when Krishna disappeared, the Kali Yuga began and all the sinful people are rising up. Then Uddhavji, he said, and the Yadus, the residents of Dwarka, Krishna's own family members, they are unfortunate because even though they are living with Krishna, they are sitting together, eating with him, talking with him, playing with him all the time. But they did not know of his Bhagavata, his Godhood, any more than the fish in the milk ocean know that the moon which appeared from the milk ocean is actually a great devata the fish in the milk ocean thought oh the moon is another fish like me <laughs> no, so the moon appeared from the milk ocean and the fish there saw oh here's another fish like me <laughs> they couldn't understand the moon is the chandrama great devata very powerful and the origin of Neptun. so this is a very mm, subtle mystery to understand. Because Udavji is saying they are so unfortunate, the Yadu dynasty, that they did not recognize Sri Krishna's powers, his position as Bhagavan. Now, how did this happen? Because Udav is feeling so much separation from Krishna. And in separation, then you see in Dwarka there is a mixture of Aishwari and Madhurya, depending on the circumstances. So very often the residents of Dwarka they forget that Krishna is God and interact with him like a family member. 
And sometimes they're aware of his opulence. But when separation comes, in the bath of separation, it is like the sun and it reveals Krishna's sweetness but also his opulence. So because Uddhav was in very intense separation, so he was seeing in his heart the opulences of Krishna and then seeing his associates, the Yadus, just dealing with him like their family member and saying, oh, they're not real, they're unfortunate, they're not realizing that he is Bhagavan, he is God. This is his inner realization, that's why he's speaking in this way. But actually, and it should be understood that those who don't realize Krishna's opulence, they are more fortunate than those who do. It's just in that moment, Uddhav, in his feeling of separation, realizes the opulence of Dwarkadish Krishna and seeing in his heart the associates interacting with him just like a family member, is thinking, oh, don't they understand? And said, they are unfortunate. But really, Uddhav is unfortunate because Uddhav wanted to go with Krishna. Hmm? But Krishna told him, no, you have to stay in this world and speak Srimad Bhagavatam. So they became, the presence of Dwarka became apricot with Krishna and Uddhav was left behind. So you cannot take the words of Srimad Bhagavatam at face value directly. <laughs> because sometimes, the, in this is a case where the Siddhanta that Uddhav is saying is wrong because it's coming from his bath, spoken in the madness of his separation. Then Uddhavji, he said, the Yadus, the family members of Krishna in Dwarka, are very intelligent and they understand Krishna's heart. But they saw him as Paramatma. That means at those times where the residents of Dwarka were experiencing the opulences of Krishna and their natural relationship became slackened, then they realized Krishna is God. But what did they realize? They realized that He is Paramatma. They did not realize that He is actually Swayam Bhagavan the origin of Narayan and all others. They thought is only Dharma. So we're giving some illustration here how this understanding Krishna's two Bhagavan Swayam even this verse which is the Paribhasha Sutra of the whole Srimad Bhagavatam it is like the uh, candle light the lamp which illuminates the meaning of the whole Srimad Bhagavatam. Even this is not uh, translated or interpreted properly by those in other Sampradayas. They think that Krishna is the incarnation of the Purusha Avatar coming from Vishnu, Kabbada Krishna Vishnu. But here, even Uddhavi is saying more than that, that Krishna's eternal associates in Dwarka, either they see him as their family member, or if they realize that he's God, they see his opulence, then they think he's Paramatma. So how secret, how confidential is that knowledge of Krishna's supremacy? So don't take it for granted. These mysteries are only revealed by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Mm. Though they are written in Srimad Bhagavatam, but the mystery of Srimad Bhagavatam is understood by those who are in the shelter of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Swarup Dhamaraga Swami said, Jaha Bhagavata Pada Vaishnavera Sthani Eikanta Ashwai Koru Chaitanya Charani If you want to study Srimad Bhagavatam, then sit at the lotus feet of a pure Vaishnava and hear Srimad Bhagavatam from him and be under the complete shelter of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chaitanya Rabhakta Gana Nitya Karo Sangha If you will daily associate with the Gaura Bhakta Brenda, the associates of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then Tabito Jani Be Siddhanta Samudra Taranga then you will be able to enter into the dancing waves in the ocean of Siddhanta. Now,
when that Swayam Bhagavan, Swayam Rup of Krishna, Ananya Pekshiki, Ananya Pekshiki Yad Rupa Rupam Swayam Rupaha Sauchate. In Lago Bhagavatam Rita, Srila Rupa Goswami said, that form of God which is not dependent upon any other form for his opulence or sweetness is Swayam Rupa Krishna. Ananya Pekshiki Yad Rupam Swayam Rupaha Sauchate. When that Krishna appears in this world, now he will perform pastimes by which even himself in his pastimes in Goloka Prindavan he will be astonished. So what is the Vaishishtya, the speciality of the Leelas here? So we mentioned before four things uh, as, a, as a small part of the class about Sri Krishna's appearance Leela. But today we want to go into more depth in these four specialities of Krishna's Prakat Leela in Boma Brindavan, in earthly Brindavan and his other dharms here. So the first speciality is in this world there is Krishna's Janma Leela, the birth pastime. In the spiritual world, see Krishna is Gopa Vesha Vainakara Navakesha Natabara. Absorbed in the mood and the attire of a cowherd boy, playing on his flute. He is like the best of dancers and he is Navakishur. That is his eternal original Swarup. So in the spiritual world, he is eternally Kishur age, like adolescent, a teenager. So there is no birth in the spiritual world for Krishna. Only Madhya Yashoda and the Brajabhasis, they have a samskar, they have a Nitya Sanskar, eternal impression. Oh, we remember when Krishna was born. But there in the spiritual world it never happened. But that bhav, they have that remembrance, takes on a tangible form. It becomes concrete and all the world, those who are present at that time, can see it when Krishna comes in this world. And therefore, though the bridge buses can remember that and feel joy, but when they actually live it here in this world, then it, the relishment is more intense. Very, very beautiful. So, we have discussed how Nanda Maharaj and the bridge buses, they celebrated the birth of that beautiful Shamala. Then, the second speciality of Sri Krishna's Leela in this world is Asur Bad Leela, the killing of demons. In the spiritual world, everyone has love for Krishna. So there are no demons in the spiritual world. So there's no possibility for Krishna to kill demons. There are only rumors of demons. Krishna is eternally Kishore, but everyone speaks. Oh, Krishna is Putanari. Hmm? Is Agahari. Is Agabaka Shakataka. He has killed Shakatur, Shakatasur, Bakasur, and Agasur, and so on. So they use these names, which are full of rasa for Krishna, but that Leela did not happen there in the spiritual world. His Aristanasana, his name is there, that he has killed Aristasur. His Kaliya Damana, but that Kaliya Damana is not there in the spiritual world. So everyone knows the names, they glorify him in that way. They have the samskars, the impressions, but it becomes manifest practically here in this world. The killing of the demons is to uh, renew and intensify again and again the love of the bridge buses. Demons cannot enter Brindava, but Yoga Maya brings them there to fulfill some particular purpose. Mm -hmm. 
Now, there is some nuance in this also. Shri Vishwa Chavitakur explained that in some Puranas, there is a mention of demons in the spiritual world. Even. So, then one may say, how is that possible? So the reason is this. Just like if there's a king and he has a royal court, then sometimes for fun, for his amusement, and for the amusement of his courtiers, he may bring a wild animal like a tiger into the court for a few moments and then take him away, just for, everyone, for everyone's entertainment. So in the same way, Yoga Maya, which is Agatana Gatana Patiasi Shakti, the power to make the impossible possible, sometimes may uh, bring a demon even to the transcendental abode. It's not impossible. Sometimes Yoga Maya may bring a great sage like Brigurishi or the four Kumaras. You know, the four Kumaras came to the gates of Vaikuntha. How could they do that? They were not devotees, they were not bhaktas. But Yoga Maya brought them there because their guru, Lord Brahma, was praying for them. So by the mercy of their guru, Yoga Maya arranged to bring the four Kumaras to the gates of Vaikuntha. Brigurishi, he went and he kicked the chest of Lord Narayan. So Yoga Maya can bring a Rishi from this world to the spiritual world. Dorvasa Rishi also went to Lord Naraya to beg shelter from the chakra. So Yoga Maya can sometimes arrange for Rishis or purified persons from this world or even demons. Now, it's not said that the demons themselves have really gone to the spiritual world. Why? Because even though Yoga Maya can bring them to make some entertainment for Krishna and his associates, they did not really go there because their consciousness was not there. You see? The spiritual world is a place, it is, by contrast, means no anxiety, full of joy. But if the demons are brought there by Yoga Maya, then they are not full of joy, so they are not subjectively really there though they experience being taken there. So in that sense it is said, uh, there are no demons in the spiritual world. Though there are some rare ex exceptions where Yoga Maya can bring them for a moment. Also, that in some of the Puranas it is said that Krishna is fighting with the demons in the spiritual world can be explained in this way. Jiva Goswami in uh, Bhakti Sandarva. He says that sometimes there's a yantra, like a puppet. And just as a person who knows tantra, some magic, can say a spell and make a puppet dance as if it came alive. So similarly, there are some yantras, like in the shape of demons, lying without any life. And Yoga Maya, by her magic, can bring them to life to make some exciting pastime and then afterwards then they become lifeless again. <laughs> Demons who are killed or chastised by Krishna in this world also may be granted him a place there. For example, Kaliya actually became a great devotee. And in some kalpas, instead of Krishna sending Kaliya away from the Jamuna, he says, stay here and when I want to go for a speedboat ride on the Jamuna with my coward boys, like a jet ski, you know, then Krishna will come, hey Subhal Sri Ram, come on, let's go, and then we'll jump on the back of Kaliya and go racing around the Jamuna. <laughs> and some, in some mm, kalpas, when Krishna from, from Vrindavan goes to Mathura, instead of going on a chariot with Akrura, he gets on the back of Kali and he rides Kali along the Jamuna and goes to Mathura. <laughs> also, it is said that Aristasura attained the transcendental world and now even today, Krishna and the coward boys, they all get on a bullet cart and go, oh, come on, let's go. And Arista takes them for rides. 
So he's not Arista Sur anymore. Now he's Mahatma Arista. <laughs> the great soul Arista. <laughs> and also Keshi. Krishna has sent Keshi to the spiritual world. And there he's in Golok in the form of a big horse. And sometimes the coward boys say, let's ride Keshi today. And they climb on his back. And there's hundreds of coward boys all holding on to the back of Keshi. And then Keshi jumps so high he goes through the clouds. Woo! And all the boys are, how you go? <laughs> Krishna and his friends, they have so much fun playing. So, in the spiritual world, Krishna does not kill Bhutana, Bakasu, Agasu, and so on. That's these pastimes that we have read in Srimad Bhagavatam. And there are no demons in the spiritual world, but these are some of the nuances that we have been accepted by our Acharyas. So this is the second speciality of the Prakatlila. Now, come to the third speciality of the Prakatlila. Some persons say that the third speciality is Parakyarasa. That in this world, the young gopis, their marriages are arranged to others and then they have to secretly meet with Krishna. But when the Leela is over, then uh, Krishna and gopis are married and they go to the spiritual world and Krishna and gopis and Krishna and Radhika are jointly married in the spiritual world. There's no Parakya Leela there. Now, our Acharyas accept that this is one Leela going on in the Golok Pagash. The transcendental planet Golok has an inner aspect and an outer aspect. So the inner aspect is called Gokul, Braj or Vrindavan. And the outer aspect that is called the Vive Half is the, the light of the opulence of that Gokul that is called Golok. If someone worships Radha and Krishna by Vaidhi Bhakti, they can go to Golok. Only by Raganuga Bhakti can you go to Goku or Braj. So, what is the difference? In that Goku Braj, no one knows that Krishna is God. Lord Narayan is God. Nanda Maharaj is worshipping Lord Narayan. Sometimes your shoulder will say, Krishna, come on, go to the Arti with your father. <laughs> and Krishna will have to stand there. And, yeah. Nanda Maharaj is very concentrating to puja to Lord Narayan. Oh God, please. Help, make sure my son is happy and not disturbed by anything. Else. And he's healthy. We will have a long life. Sakam Bhakti. If someone is worshipping God for their family members, it's Sakam. But because his family member is Krishna, <laughs> then for him it's Uttam Bhakti. If we'll do the same thing, praying to God for our family members, then it will be Sakam mixed with worldly desires. <laughs> but, not, but where does this come from? This is the reflection of the transcendental world. Well, Nanda Maharaj is doing the very same wrong thing, but there it's perfect and completely right. <laughs> and Madhya Shoda is coming and watching the Arti, and young Krishna is there all restless, like children sometimes they come to Arti and they're just looking around. And they can't wait when this Pajari going to finish on the right side. So Krishna is there, Lord Narayan is Bhagavan, all bridge passes are worshipping him, and Krishna wants to go out and play. <laughs> So, in Braja, no one knows that Krishna is God. This is one speciality. Another speciality is that their gopis are married to others and they have to meet with Krishna secretly. This is called the Parakyaras. Now, in the Vaibhava Prakash of that planet, in the outer aspect of planet called Golok, there uh, the residents know that Krishna is God. He sits on the throne and the Vedas personified surround him and offer prayers to him. There is Swakya mood also that uh, Radhika and Krishna, they are legally together. 
and gopis are legally together with Krishna. So that is called Swakya. But the spiritual world has so many pra uh, prakashis or so many prakos, dimensions. So there's a Parakya Prakash, Shuddha Parakya, and there's a Swakya Prakash, and there's also in between that the Abhivikta Swakya Parakya. The devotees there, sometimes they experience Swakya and sometimes they experience Parakya. On one side of the Jamuna, they experience Swakya and they cross over the other side Jamuna to Vrindavan, then they experience the Parakya and then they come back like this. They don't discriminate. So this is called Avivikta Swakya Parakya. Now, only those who do Shuddha, pure Raghunuga Bhakti can attain the inner portion, the confidential realm of Goku. So Rupa Goswami has written in Lagu Bhagavatam Rita, Yattu Goloka Namasyat Tatscha Goku Levai Bhavam. That means that that place which is known as Golok is just the vibe of the effulgence, the opulent manifestation of Gokul. But Gokul is original. Tadatma Vaibhavatsangta Tasya Tanmahim Unmate. The glory of Golok, the higher glory of Golok is that it is just the prakash, the manifestation of the, the light of the opulence of Gokul. So, our acharyas have said, you know, there's a famous verse. Aho madhupuri dhanya vaikun tatscha gariyasi dina mekam nivasena harau bhakti prajayate. Oh, how glorious is madhupuri. Oh, Mathura. How glorious is Mathura. Vaikun tatscha gariyasi. It is superior to Vaikuntha. Mm -hmm. If one will simply spend one night in Madhupuri, then uh, he will attain Bhakti. Bhakti will awaken in his heart. But our Acharyas have taken this verse and interpreted it in this way. Madhupuri is the place of Madhupati, see Krishna. Krishna is Madhupati. Adaram Madhuram, Badanam Madhuram, Nayanam Madhuram, Hasitam Madhuram. Ridayam Maduram Gamanam Maduram Madura Adipate Rakilam Madura. Krishna is Madhupati. So Madhupuri means Braja. So a whole Madhupuri Danya. How glorious is Braja? Vaikuntha Chagriyasi. It is superior even to Vaikuntha. So in this verse, here Vaikuntha means not only Vaikuntha of Lord Narayan, but Maha Vaikuntha, which includes Mathura, Dwarka, and Galok. So this verse, our chants have quoted it to show that Gokul Braj or Brindavan is superior to Golok. Oh, Madhupuri Danya, Vaikuntats Chakkariyas. Now, so we're discussing the third speciality, and that is the Parakya mood. Just as the Parakya mood is here manifest in Boma Vrindavan, that gopis are married to others. And they have to meet with Krishna secretly. It's very difficult for them to escape from their house, from the watchful eye of mother-in-law Jatila and sister-in-law Kutila and husband Abhimanyu. There's a great danger that someone may see them. So Brenda Devi has done a very wonderful thing. Brenda Devi has made a forest of dark tamal trees all around the village. And there are other flowers and creepers in the forest of Vrindavan that are actually luminous and shine in the dark. So if she had planted those uh, before the tamal trees, then uh, Krishna or Radharani could be seen sneaking out of their house at night from people's windows. Oh, who's that going into the forest at night? But Brenda Devi has made dark tamal forest around the villages and then put all the luminous flowers and creepers the other side of the dark tamal forest to make it easier for Radha Krishna and other gopis to escape from their homes, get into the darkness of the forest and then the other side where it's very bright and glorious. Yeah? They won't be seen. So, 
As this Baraki mood is here in this world, so it eternally exists in the spiritual world. So the third speciality is not that there's Parakya but not Parakya there. But the meaning is this, that in this world the actual pastimes of the gopis' marriages to the gopis is manifest. You see? In that world only they have Abhiman, I am married. Hmm? I, and this is my family, I have a husband, they have Abhiman. But the husbands are actually not there. But in this world, the husbands, uh, the Abhiman of Radharani, the idea I have a husband, becomes Abhimanyu in this world and is manifest that everyone can see. And so, the gopis have the leela of being young girls and then coming of marriageable age and then their marriage is being arranged and then very painfully. Actually, when they were told, tomorrow you have to go to the house of your in-laws, then all the gopis quietly snuck out of their house and came onto the bank of the Jamuna at Kaliarad. And they could thought, oh, we wish Kaliya was still here because then we could just take the poison and finish our lives because we don't want to stay alive and be seen or touched by another man other than Krishna. And all the gopis, one by one, they came and they arrived there covering their faces with a veil and they looked and saw each other. Oh, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? And when they saw the expression on each other's face, every gopi could understand. Oh, you also came here to kill yourself, to give up your life, rather than being married to someone other than Krishna. Mm -hmm. And from that moment, that was the day that Lalita and Vishaka, Chitta Champaklata, they became the Sakis of Radhika. Unbreakable relationship. And Shaipya and Padma, they became the Sakis of Chandravali. All they came into groups. And Radhani held hands with the Sakis and she prayed, O oh, Jamuna Devi, we Sakis who on this day will die together are taking shelter of you. Please fulfill our wish that in some future life Krishna will become our husband and Nanda and Yashoda will become our Sas and Sasra, mother, mother in law and father. -in -law. And then Radharani and holy hands with her Sakis. This is the meaning of Saki. Saki means we will die together. Uh, don't say this. Saki means friend. Friend. What is friend? Facebook friend. Thousand people you never met in your life. No. Saki means we will die together because we united in our existence is only to please Krishna. So holding hands, Radhani led all the uh, Sakis into the water, up to the knees, up to the waist, up to the neck, and they were just about to disappear under the water. And then an aerial voice said, Oh, don't do this harsh behavior. And the goddess of Jamuna, Jamuna Devi, appeared in the thousands of forms and came out from the water and caught the gopis and stopped them from drowning themselves and then brought them back onto the bank of Jamuna. And just then, Yoga Maya Purnamasi came and Brinda Devi came. And Yoga Maya Purnamasi Devi said to the gopis, we three, myself, Purnamasi Yoga Maya, Brinda Devi and Yamuna Devi, we will always protect you, Gopis. That you will never be touched, you will never be seen even by any man other than Sri Krishna. So, put faith in our words and have a very strong hope that all your desires to serve Krishna will come true. And only because they had the guarantee of the words of Yoga Maya Purnamasi, who in Vrindavan, the words of Purnamasi Devi are not less than the Vedas themselves. Only then could the gopis, like Radharani, go from Varsana and move to the in-laws' house in Yavat and stay with Abhimanyu. Otherwise, it would have, they would have died. It was by the, the guarantee, the words of Yoga Maya Devi, Yamuna Devi and Brinda Devi, we will protect you. So, 
Of course, on the marriage ceremony of Radharani, then Abhimanyu, you know, the bridegroom has to ride on a horse. But he always has to have a page boy sitting on the horse with him. So the page boy is usually the nephew of the bridegroom. So who is the nephew of Abhimanyu? Krishna. Yes. Because uh, Mother Yashoda's father, his name is Sumak Gop, and his wife is named Patala Devi. And Patala Devi's brother is Gola, and Gola's wife is Jutila. So the son of Gola and Jutila is Abhimanyu, which makes, if you could be made that family tree in your mind, you'll see that Abhimanyu is Krishna's uncle. So therefore, on the wedding day, Abhimanyu was riding on the horse, but Krishna was riding in front of him. <laughs> on the horse, all decorated. <laughs> and when they do the fire yagya, yeah. hmm? then the husband has to say the, 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 the Brahmins making the offerings and the husband has to say the mantras, but the page boy also has to sit there in the yagya. <laughs> hmm? So at that time, when Abhimanyu was about to say the mantras, then, hmm? <laughs> Young Krishna, he was young because they married young in the Vedic culture. So then young Krishna, he grabbed his uncle by the reproductive paraphernalia and gave a twist. And he could not speak. And so Krishna was saying all the mantras. Huh? And from that day, Abhimanyu did not feel any attraction to any females. <laughs> but he was too embarrassed to say anything to anyone. Huh? And then when they had to exchange the garlands, and then Radharani was offering the garland, then Krishna, he's very restless and he stuck his head in the garland. <laughs> So, the marriages of the Brajagopis to their so-called husbands are not in the spiritual world, only the impression is there, and this becomes manifest here. So, that is the third speciality. Now we come to the fourth speciality. The fourth speciality is called Gaman Agaman. Gaman Agaman. Going and coming. In the spiritual world, Vrindavan eternally exists and Krishna is there. Mathura eternally exists and he is there in another form as Mathura is Krishna. And Dwarka eternally exists and Krishna is there also. In the form of Dwarka dish. So in the three dhams, in the spiritual world, Krishna is present in three forms. Prajanda, Nanda, Shama, Sundar, Maturesh in Mathura and Dwarka dish in Dwarka. In Vrindavan, all devotees think of Krishna never leaves. Vrindavan. And he doesn't leave. In Mathura, Krishna never came there. He was always there. But everyone has the samskar oh, that when Krishna was 10 years old and 8 months, he came here. But it never happened there. And he never leaves. And in Dwarka, there, Everyone has the impression, oh, we used to live in Mathura, but when Jarasandha and Kala Yavana were attacking Mathura, then somehow or other, Jogamaya transposed us all into a fortress city, a fortified metropolis uh, on an island surrounded by ocean water in Dwarka. So they have the impression, but that movement then never happened. So everyone has an eternal Abhimani in each place. <laughs> but in this world, Krishna is only in one dharma at a time. So first Krishna is in Vrindavan. And then Sri Krishna leaves Vrindavan and goes to Mathura and he's only in Mathura. Then he leaves Mathura and he's only in Dwarka. And then he leaves Dwarka, sometimes he goes to Intraprasta, sometimes he goes to Astinapur, sometimes he goes to Matila. He goes to Vidarbha to get that book and he goes to different places to for his pastimes and he comes back to Mathura. So this is called Gaman Agaman. Now 
the speciality of this Gaman Agaman is that as Krishna has said, Vai kunta de nahi se se lila rapacha. I will perform pastimes which are not there in the spiritual sky. Se se lila kori bojate more chamatka. And these pastimes will give astonishment to me. Means that there is a special rasa relished due to the series of the lila and the gaman agaman. So in the Padma Purana, there, Vyasadeva has written, Kraman Anu Rasa Puram Sudhavat Krishna Chandraha. The meaning is that Krishna Chandra is like a cook. So when a cook is making a soup, then he has to boil the water, cut the vegetables. At the right time, he has to add the vegetables to the water. At the right time, he has to add the other ingredients. He has to uh, heat the ghee and then add the, grind the spices, add the spices together, the ginger, the chili, mm, the uh, cumin and so on. The, cayenne pepper, everything in the right order, mix it and then at the right time add that to the soup and mix it together and put the garnish. So when a, a cook is making a soup, there's a spe specific order and if he doesn't do everything in the right order, in the right amount, then it will not taste magnificent. So in the same way, when Krishna is in this world, with the extension of time, Krishna is giving one leela after another, after another, after another. So it has an accumulative effect to bring about an astonishing taste. So Krishna says, Say, say, leela kri bo jati mora chamaka. I'll do leela, which I'm not doing in the spiritual world, which will just astonish me completely. And the order is very important. So Srila Jiva Goswami part has revealed many of the inner details of this. First of all, of course, Krishna is a child and very helpless. Hmm? When he becomes hmm, almost uh, five years old, now it will be Gopastami is coming. What is Gopastami? Do you know? What is Gopastami? Yes. yes, what is Gopastami? When Krishna first time goes to graze the cows. Cows. There's two Gopastamis. First, when he is very young, about five, he only takes calves. Because he's small and the, and the cows are too big. So he takes the calves then. The next year when he's bigger and he has more experience, then the parents allow him to take out the cows. So, but go past to me is more than this. Go past to me is a rite of passage. Understand? Uh, these days there's not so many rites of passage because culture has been dissolved. But in the real cultures, and especially in the Vedic culture, there are stages in your life when you pass from your baby, it's the Krishna passing from his Balya Lila to Paganda Lila. Mm -hmm. So for the parents become very proud when the child has a, a rite of passage, like the first day at school is a rite of passage and the parents feel very proud but they're also very worried as well. So go past to me, that is Krishna's rite of passage from the predominance of Vatsalyaras in his Lila to the prominence of Sakyaras in his Lila. From his infancy to his boyhood. So it's a very emotional moment for Krishna, for Nanda and Yashoda. But that rite of passage is not in the spiritual world. Because there his ages are eternal. So how beautiful it is. Because don't think that Krishna is only adolescent in the spiritual world. There are many prakashas in, in the spiritual world. And in one, Krishna is eternally a baby, in another is eternally a boy, in another is eternally Kishore. But the Kishore Rupa is the origin of all the other forms. But in each prakash, in the spiritual world, he's the same age eternally. Only when he comes here, he has this experience of growing up. 
So this rites of passage as a child is growing up is very emotional, both for the child and for his friends and for the parents. So this is a special rasa. So Sudhavat Krishna Chandra, Krishna is like a cook and he's making a delicious preparation. Hmm? Now, Krishna, of course, in Bhagavad Gita, we quoted in the beginning of the class today, Ajopi Sana Vyayatma, my body never changes. But we see in this world that he is growing. So, how can we reconcile that with the fact that Krishna said, my body never changes? So, the answer is this, that the Krishna of the Prakat Leela is just Krishna of the Aprakat Leela. And there are many prakashas in the spiritual world where Krishna is one, where he's two, where he's three, when he's four. So that Krishna, that Leela from that Aprakat Prakash becomes manifest. And then that becomes unmanifest, then the next age becomes manifest. That becomes unmanifest, the next age becomes manifest. So this Leela here is not exactly another Leela, but it is that Leela coming from the different prakashas in the spiritual world one after another. And so it gives the impression that Krishna is growing. In this way, this is the mystery behind the verse of Bhagavad Gita. I am unborn and my body never changes. So, Krishna, he takes the cows to graze and now he's gone into his Paugandali, his boyhood pastimes. So with the boys, Krishna's now having so much fun because he's independent. When he's at home, his mother is always watching him. Uh, mother your shoulder is churning the yogurt and doing the housework. But then the next moment she thinks, oh where is my baby? What is he doing? And she sees, oh, Krishna has gone to the chula, the stove in the kitchen, and he's discovered a new game. When I throw ghee in the stove, it goes <laughs> So Krishna is throwing ghee in the stove and having fun. Mother Shoda goes, hey, what are you doing? Come here. And grabs him by the ear. Don't do that. It's dangerous. Then Mother Shoda is doing the housework. And she, what? It's a bit quiet what's going on. That's suspicious. Suspiciously quiet. Then she looks and sees, oh, little baby Krishna has found a Nanda Maharaji's sword. Big sword. And he's trying to lift it up. But the shoulder runs and catches it. But he don't do that. It's dangerous, put it back. She puts it in the same. Yeah. Again, she's doing the housework. She's looking around. It's suspiciously quiet. What's going on? She looks in the house, she cannot see. She looks outside into the courtyard. One dog is sitting there. And little Krishna is trying to discover how far can I put my hand inside the mouth of this dog. <laughs> Mother Shoda goes, hey, what did you come here? Don't do that. So this is the childhood. Mother Shoda is always watching. She hears, oh, Maya, Maya, Maya. Oh, Mother, help, help, help. Mother Shoda runs outside. <gasps> And calls Nanda Maharaj. Nanda Maharaj comes running to save Krishna. Why? One bull was just outside and the bull was eating some straw with big horns. Little Krishna came along. He thought, oh, a climbing place. So little Krishna climbed onto the horns. Then the bull said, what's going on? And he looked up like this. And now Krishna said, up in there, oh, my God, my God, mother, help me, help me. But the Ashoda is afraid, and Nanda Maharaj came and took Krishna off the horns of the book. And his mother said, don't do that. So when baby Krishna is in the house, Madhya Ashoda is watching everything. But now he is five years old. He can go out into the forest with his friends. Ah! Now Krishna is so happy. <laughs> mother cannot watch me, I can do anything I like. I can climb trees, I can jump in the river, I can fight with my friends. And now the adventurousness of the Pau Bandalila is there. So in this way the Kram, Kramam Anura Sapuram, by the sequence the Rasa becomes poor. Complete. Sudha Vat Krishna Chandra. Krishna, like a cook, is adding the spices to his Leela. Then, as he's coming to the end of uh, his childhood, now hmm, the, 
he begins to become attracted to Braj Gopis. So now he is another rite of passage. He's moving from the childhood to the adolescence, to the teenage time. So that Leela is the that is especially illustrated by Kaliya Dham and Leela. It was very hot. The cowherd boys ran to the bank of Jamuna with the calves and began to sip the water in a lake on the side of Jamuna. And they became unconscious, as if dead, because the water was poisoned by the poison of Kaliya. When Krishna came running there and saw all his friends were dead, what will happen? If a child will come to meet with their friends as they get there and their friends, what will the child do? Just burst out crying. Krishna, only six and a half years old, saw all of his friends lying dead on the back of him. He just began to cry. And the tears were flowing in profusion down his face, down his belly, and onto the ground, and making streams through the dust of the Jamuna. And as the streams of Krishna's tears were going here and there, as the tears touched each coward boy, being touched by the tears of Krishna, they opened their eyes and woke up and came back to life. The coward boys looked at each other. What happened? What happened? We died. But now we're alive again. How did it happen? One boy said, I know the secret. The other boy said, tell me, tell me, what's the secret? I heard that Gargacharya said, Anaina Sarva Durgani Yuyamanja Starisyata. That those who love Krishna, they will cross over all obstacles. So, it is because of our love and affection with Krishna that somehow or other we have crossed over this obstacle. Then Krishna thought, oh, this snake has given a disturbance to my, oh, my friends. And he climbed up on a Kadamba tree and he walked along the branch. The boys were saying, don't do it, Krishna, don't do it. But Krishna wasn't listening. He tied his cloth around his waist very tight and made his turban tight. And then he jumped into the poisonous water. And when he hit the water, it made a tidal wave. So the wave was washing up under the shore and all the boys who were standing there turned around and had to run away to get away from the wave of poison that was coming. <laughs> but Krishna started to splash and it disturbed Kaliya. Kaliya came and then he came up out of the water and wrapped up Krishna in his coils and all the boys, they were fainting. There were inauspicious omens everywhere all over Braj. The earth was trembling. There were comets in the sky. The bridge basses. The men were feeling a trembling in their left eye, their left arm and left leg. And the ladies feel a trembling in the right eye, right arm and right leg. That's inauspiciousness. There can be no inauspiciousness whatsoever in Braja. Only the demigods were thinking, oh, now Krishna's doing a dramatic pastime. Let's make some special effects. So the special effects department of the demigods, they made some comets fall, they made some earthquakes, they made some trembling in the bodies and the eyes of the people, like this, to make the drama more convincing. So wherever they were, the coward boys came out of their homes, sorry, the coward men and the women came out from the village, running to the forest, following Krishna's footprints. Because because even though Krishna has millions of cows, they love him so much that they never step on his footprints. So Krishna's footprints were still visible. And they followed them and they came on the bank of Jamuna. Mother Yashoda, she became so mad in separation. She saw a cow and in the madness of separation from Krishna, she thought the cow was a Brahmin. And said, oh Brahmin, I bow down to you. Please chant some mantras and do a yagya. Save my Krishna. She saw a banyan tree with the long roots hanging down. She thought it was an Ayurvedic doctor and she gave pronounced. Please give some medicine to save my child from the poison. Madhya showed herself when to run into the poisonous lake. 
But her sakis held her back and when she couldn't go, she fainted. Then the sakis of Madhya showed that they were singing the glories of Krishna. One may think, oh, this is a strange time to sing the glories of Krishna. And there he is wrapped up in the poisonous coils of Kalia. He will die. Why are you singing the glories of Krishna now? Huh? What? Because they thought Madhya Yashoda would die and they knew that this was the only sound that could save her life. Balaram was holding the Nanda Maharaj and the others back. Don't you worry. Hmm? And Balaram was smiling. Hmm? Krishna was inside, Kaliya wrapped up, he was looking. Old bridge Basil come, but where are the gopis? And then when he saw the gopis coming, good, good, good. But where's Radhika? Then Radha, when he saw Radhika came, okay. Now Radhika is here, I'm ready. Oh, and he burst out from the coils of Kaliya. Hmm? Why? Because now, see, when a young boy just starts to mature and get attracted to girls, now it becomes a show off. <laughs> He'll do anything to show off to try to attract the attention of the girls. And this is why Krishna jumped in the Kaliya Lake. So that he could show, I am very strong and I can dance also very nicely. Can you also dance? Why don't you dance with me? And he cannot say these things, but this is the meaning of the Leela. So Krishna began to dance on the heads of Kali and Balaram was laughing. He said, uh, Krishna, in the form of Narayan, he's always, I take the form of a snake, Ananta Shesh, and Krishna becomes Narayan. But he never dances like this with me. <laughs> so when Krishna had subdued Kaliya and was decorated by the Nagapatnis, then Krishna came. There was an island in the middle of the lake where he was fighting with Kaliya. Then from that island, he walked back to the bank of Jamuna. But Krishna was walking on the water because all the Nagas, they were with their heads swimming underneath and putting their heads under his feet. So one head was coming and then another head and another head like this. And Krishna walked across the water like this, onto the bank. And when he came on the bank, then all Prince Basis, without any order, without any Mariada or anything, because seniors should come first and then others, they all came and they were embracing. And Krishna walked past the Braj Gopis, and now he's just entering into Adi Kishore, the beginning of his Kishore period. And he's wearing Kostuba money on his chest, and he's fully decorated and beautiful. And as he walked past the Braj Gopis, who were looking at him with their big lotus eyes full of longing from a distance. Then as he walked past them, each gopi just <laughs> fainted and fell down like a banana tree in a storm. <laughs> you know when a, when a hurricane wind comes, all the banana trees fall flat because they have no roots. Mm -hmm. All gopis were like that. They all fell. And they, the bridge passes, they didn't want to go home. So they decided they would camp there that night. And they camped. And in the morning when it was time to go home, then the gopis, they did not know which way to go. They could not think, who am I, where am I, where to go. Their mother-in-laws and other relatives said, come, come on, this way, let's go. And were leading them. And Krishna saw the intensity, how gopis had, had fallen so deeply in love with Krishna. Now the Kishore Leela had begun. That Krishna felt very, very sorry for them. How can they stay alive without me? So from that day, Krishna began to practice every day playing on his feet. <laughs> Why? Because even though they cannot be with me and I cannot be with them, but still, I can call them on my flute. I can be in touch with them all the time through the sound of the veil. So in this way, hmm, Suddhava Krishna Chandra, one Leela after another, Krishna is adding the spices one by one hmm, to make the rasa more and more beautiful. So then, hmm, Indra, he tried to destroy Braja because he was upset that um, the Nanda Maharaj and the coward people, they did a yagya for him every year, but this year they didn't worship him, they worship Govardhan instead. So Indra sent the rain. But you can see, before that, in chapter 15, 
Daniele Madri, Dalini, Tenovir Rutastad. Krishna has already started to meet secretly with the gopis. So Krishna had secretly met with Chandravali. And when Chandravali held the lotus feet of Krishna on her heart, then the kumkum, the vermilion from her chest was made on his feet. And when Krishna was returning, that kumkum was made on the grass at Govardhan. So then afterwards Krishna thought about this. He said, oh, what will happen if the daughter of Brishul Banu Maharaj, that is Srimati Ji, Radharani, will go to Govardhan and see the evidence that I have met with Chandravati. Oh no. So then just to save him, Jova Maya inspired Indra to send the rain and wash away all the evidence. So this is the real actual meaning behind the Govardhan Lila. <laughs> Indra sent the rain to wash it, to, to destroy Braj, but really it was to save Krishna. Because Krishna's relationship with Radharani had it had not really just, just really begun. And it could be over before it even began. It was a very critical moment. <laughs> See, Radhika's love can never be broken. It is un unconditional. But she can become angry. And Krishna is very afraid of this man. The sulky mood of her. So when the water came and was washing everything away, Krishna was actually quite relieved. <laughs> So then Krishna lifted Giriraj Govada for seven days and nights. And then afterwards he put down Govada and came out from under the hill. And tam prema vegan nibrita brajoka so yata sami yu pararambana di bihi go piasta chasa sneha apuja and mudha the driksha tat be yu juju sadashishaha. Shukadev Goswami is saying that when Krishna put down the hill, then all Brijbasis came and embraced Krishna. Madhya Shoda was holding his hand and kissing his hand and massaging his hand. Are you okay? Are you okay? Are you alright? Krishna said, oh yes, Mother, I'm fine. Yes, you're fine now, but maybe when you're older you will have pain. If you're young and you live very heavy weights when you're older. <laughs> Madhisha, you are young now, but later you may have pain. The Drikshita be you use Sadashisha. The older members of the coward community, the old ladies, they were coming with the barley and the unhusked rice and they were giving the the Drikshita means the barley and they were giving blessings on his head. Sadashisha, Chiranjivi Baba. May you have a long life. Out of affection they were blessing him. He just left the mountain on his little thing of seven days and nights. But they're still thinking he's a child. <laughs> because that's the, that's the nature of the frame of Braja. Swasambanda Sabhalya. The, the, the strength of their relation with Krishna is so strong, even if you lift the mountain on his little finger for seven days, then Anusandam Abhav, they don't investigate, well, how did he do that? Is he a demigod or a god or what? They don't investigate because of the strength of their love. The coward boys were coming and also massaging Krishna's legs. His mother was embracing and bathing with tears and milk was flowing from her breast. And Rohini and Nanda Maharaj. Oh. Then afterwards, Krishna was at Govardhan and he was sitting alone. He snook away from the boys and Indra came. And Indra and all the demigods, they did the puja of Krishna. And when they finished this puja, all the paraphernalia, big chamaras and the uh, fans and the incense holders and the uh, deep, deep holders covered with huge, covered with jewels. They put them down here and they're hanging them on the trees and the demigods flew away. And the cowboys were looking at it. Where is Krishna? Where is Krishna? The demigods before the Abhishek, you know, you have to give a massage with fragrant oil. So Krishna was smelling of this fragrant oil from heaven. And the coward boys came running to him. Krishna, where have you been? What are you doing? And the cowboys were sniffing him. What's that perfume you're wearing? 
There's nothing, nothing. He was embarrassed that he was God. He doesn't want to be God with his friends in Vrindavan. He was denying him. Nothing, nothing. One boy said, I saw from far away. And he picked up one of the deeps. I saw one person with a thousand eyes all over his body and he was going. <laughs> and another one with five heads and he had a chamber and he was going. <laughs> and the boy, the boy surrounding Krishna picking up the different paraphernalia and imitating the, the various demigods. And the demigods who were flying away in the sky, they turned around and they looked and they saw something wonderful. That Krishna, when they were doing puja, he was just sitting there. <laughs> Waiting for it to be over. But now, the coward boys were taking the paraphernalia and imitating them. Now Krishna was smiling and he was really happy. And the demigods in the sky looked back and they thought, Oh, now our life is successful. We could not please Krishna, but at least we bought some paraphernalia and the boys are playing with it and now Krishna's pleased. We could do something. <laughs> and then they returned to their heavenly planets. So then all the boys, they came back to the village. And in the evening, all the bridge buses are waiting. They see the dust go up into the sky. And the dust goes in the sky, and they think, oh, Krishna is coming. It seems like hundreds of years that he was gone. And Nanda Maharaj, Madhya Shoda, and all the bridge buses come out from the village. And they saw the boys coming, and they're dressed in because they decorated Krishna with so many jewels and garlands, necklaces and ornaments from the heavenly planets and Krishna had given them to his friends. So now all the little boys are dressed up with gold and diamonds, jewels and emeralds and jewels from the heavenly planets not even available in this world. And the parents are thinking, uh -huh, where did you get all this bling? <laughs> Krishna, Krishna, where are you, Krishna? And Krishna's hiding at the back because he's really embarrassed. Because now his secret might come out that he's God. And that's completely embarrassing in Vrindavan. So then Balaram was behind Krishna and he pushed him forward. He didn't want to come forward. Balaram pushed his little brother forward and in front of Nanda Maharaj. So then, Tridha, he held up one chamara, big chamara from heaven, covered in jewels. Nanda Maharaj said to Krishna, what happened? And the cowboy said, I think that this speaks for itself. <laughs> Nanda Maharaj said, Satyam Bada. Krishna, tell the truth, because he often doesn't tell the truth. <laughs> now tell the truth, Krishna. Then Madhu Mangal pushed through. He said, look, I know, I saw everything that happened. First, there was, I saw this person, he had four heads. There was another one with five heads. And there was another one with a thousand eyes. And also a talking cow. And a white elephant also. <laughs> Then all the coward men said, yes, yes, be quiet. <laughs> we don't need to hear your tall stories. <laughs> so then Nanda Maharaj put Krishna on the spot. Tell us, what happened? What did you do? And just when Krishna was now stuck and could not get out of the situation, there was an aerial voice in the sky. Oh, just as we have done, Abhishek of Krishna to crown him Govinda Gavendra, the Lord of the Cows, Govinda. So now you should do an Abhishek of Krishna to make him mm, Braja Navayuvaraj. All the bridge buses were stunned. Nandamara said, We cannot delay. The Devitas have spoken. Now is the time. 
to make an Abhishek of Krishna that he will become Braja Navayubaraj, the crown prince. That means the official ceremony that when Nandamaraj retires that Krishna will become the next king of Braja. So in this way, it is called the Rasantara. The Ras was going this way, but then Yoga Maya made some distraction and the Ras went that way and Krishna, he was saved again. <laughs> So then there was a big fire sacrifice, an Abhishek for Krishna. Krishna was surrounded by Brahmins and mother and father and uncles and aunties. Krishna's four uncles, Upananda, Agnananda, Prasananda and Nandana. And four aunties, Tungi, Bivari, Kuvalaya and Atulya. So all the uncles and aunties and cousins and all the family were surrounding Krishna. And then the other residents of Braj and at the back they were the gopis. And the gopis are at the back of the crowd and they're looking. And sometimes the crowd moves and they get a little glimpse of a part of Krishna here or a part of Krishna there. You see how Yoga Maya arranges how to increase the anurag. Increase the eagerness. Not full darshan, little darshan. And the gopis are, were crying. A lot. Because this Abhishek ceremony that is done for the Navayuvaraj is very similar to the Abhishek ceremony that is done to a bridegroom who gets married. Now the gopis themselves have already been married. And this is just too much. Yes. Because although Krishna is not getting married, the whole ceremony is exactly as if he were about to get married. And each gopi is crying, Oh Vidhi, Oh Creator Lord Brahma, you are so cruel. Cool. One day there will be a ceremony just like this. And Krishna will be having Abhishek just like this. And we'll be sitting at the back just like this. And he'll be married to one very fortunate young gopi. We don't know who, but it won't be us. But it's not fair. We all love Krishna. But we will be at the back of that day. Who will, Krishna, who will that fortunate gopi be? Who Krishna will accept as his beloved. And they were crying like this. So after the ceremony they went to their home. And they could not sleep at night. And because Yayatamam Prapadyante Krishna always reciprocates with his devotees. Krishna also could not sleep at night. So the gopis went up to the roof of their houses. There's the Chandra Shala in the Vedic houses. It's a place where when the moon shining you can sleep in the moonlight. And Krishna went up to his Chandra Shala. And he was lying there awake at night. He could not sleep. And then he remembered something. Each of the demigods had given Krishna a gift. But he distributed those gifts, he'd given them away to his friends. But one gift given by Lord Shiva, he did not give. What was that? Banksy, a flute. Krishna looked and saw. Ah, this must be a very special flute given by Lord Shiva. So, he took the flute and he put it to his lips. And then there's a way of playing a note with the flute where you use the tongue. <laughs> like that. It makes a sharp sound. So just at that moment, all the gopis all over Braja, in the middle of the night, they were thinking, Oh Krishna, who will that girl be whom you accept as your beloved bride? Who will it be? And just then Krishna played his flute and said, so in Sanskrit, the word Twam means you, but if you're speaking very intimately, you don't say Twam, you can say Tu. So they said, who will that girl be? And the reply came all over Braj, Tu, you! And when the gopis heard that reply of Krishna, they fainted in ecstasy. All over Braj, all gopis. <laughs> So, in this way, Krishna's Leela is going on step by step. And very soon, Rasa Leela came. And then, shortly after that, Akrura came 
to Vrindavan and to Krishna to Mathura. Then all Mathura is in a terrible state of suffering. All Vrindavan is in a terrible, terrible state of suffering. To whom say Rohini Yashoda is crying as if she's become almost blind. The cows are lying on the ground. They're not eating the grass. The peacocks are no longer dancing. The cuckoo birds are no longer singing. Even the bumblebees don't go to the flower. The bumblebees are rolling on the ground and crying. Kanu, Kanu, Koriju. Oh, Kanu, Kanu, where are you? Where are you? Because their pran, their atma, their life and soul, for whom they live at every moment, has gone to Mathura. Krishna Ramadur Amritera Sindhu Radharani is thinking that the sweetness of Krishna is like an ocean of nectar. And I am like a person with a sanipat rog. That is a disease where a person has a very high fever and they are about to die. But they are very, very thirsty and they want to drink. So Radharani feels Krishna's sweetness is like a whole ocean. I want to, my heart wants to drink the whole ocean. But just as a, a doctor with a patient who has that disease cannot give them one drop of water because if they'll take one drop of water they will die. So similarly, oh Krishna, he is like the Vaidya doctor, very cruel to me by my misfortune. He's not giving me a single drop and he's gone away to Mathura. So rather, rather than his fainting, rolling on the ground, becoming unconscious, sometimes talking to bumblebees. Hey, bumblebee? What's that on your moustache? What's that on your antenna? <laughs> hmm? Well, I came, was flying from Mathura to Vrindavan. It's a long distance for a small bumblebee. So on the way I stopped to get a drink at a local lotus flower. So I went in the lotus flower to drink some honey to get refreshed and get some strength. And the pollen from the lotus flower got stuck on my antenna and on my moustache. Radharani said, you are a liar. Madhu Paketa You are the friend of a cheetah and you are also cheating by his bad association. I know what that red powder is. It's the kumkum from the breast of Krishna's new lover in Mathura. 
and she has embraced him and embracing him her breast has crushed his garland and when you came to take the nectar from the flower in Krishna's garland then the Kum Kum came on your distortion on your head and now you have come here Krishna has sent you as a messenger to tell me oh hmm? Radharani said to the Bhama you are a liar the Bhama says uh, no I am not oh Swamini oh you are not I am not your Swamini uh, oh Krishna Priya I am not Krishna Priya tell me the truth the Bumblebee said, uh, Krishna is broken hearted and only thinking about you day and night. Really? Then what is this red powder on your mustache? I know it's from his new girlfriend. Hmm? But you are so drunk because you came from Madhupuri. Madhupuri is called Madhupuri and Madhu means wine. It is the city of alcohol. And the Yadu dynasty, the warriors of their famous, since the time of Yati Maharaj gave a curse to Yadu. And they are famous for drinking. So you have been drinking because you associated with the Yadavas. And you are so drunk, you have come here to tell me oh, that Krishna loves me and he never thinks of anyone else but me. But you have forgotten that you have the cosmetics of his new girlfriend all over your face because you are so drunk. Bhadu Bhadu Patista, if you want to pacify anyone, go back to Mathura. Because probably he's meeting with one young princess and forgets that he's late for his appointment with another one. And then when he goes to meet another young Christian, she's upset with him that he's late. So Krishna needs your services there in Mathura. Go and pacify those girls. But don't try to pacify us, we'll never accept Krishna. We don't want to have to have any relation with him. So in this way, in the madness of brain separation, Radharani is talking with the bumblebees. After some time, Krishna went to Kurukshetra at the time of the solar eclipse. And Bridge Basis thought this is a chance for us to meet with Krishna. And Radharani went there also. And she requested Krishna come back to Vrindavan. But he did not come. He went back to uh, Dwarka. Now when the bridge buses were returning from Kurukshetra, they didn't return to Nandagal, Varsana, but they came on the bank of Jumuna on the other side in the forest of Lohavan. And they made a camp there. Why? Because all the time messengers, messengers from Braj were going uh, backwards and forwards. Sorry, messages from Dorka were coming to Braj, bringing messages, going backwards and forwards on horses very fast, bringing news of Krishna. And they heard the news that Krishna had gone to the Rajasuya Yajna of Yudhisthira Maharaj. So they were thinking, oh, Krishna is with Yudhisthira Maharaj and he has to go back to Dwarka. So he may come back through the road which goes past Lohavan Forest. So Bridge Basistot will not return to our homes. Let's camp here on the side of the road. And Bridge Basis were on each side of the road and they were waiting. And they thought, when Krishna now is a prince, he's forgotten all about us. But when he rides by on a golden chariot, we can wave to him as he goes by. So with this hope in their hearts, the bridge buses were camping. So then some news came that in Dwarka, a demon was attacking. His name was Shalva. Shalva did hard austerities, eating only the hand of dust every day to satisfy Lord Shiva and by the blessings of Lord Shiva he received from the demon Maya Dhanava a spaceship made of iron as big as a city that could he could fly by controlling uh, control it by only his mind so Shalva because Krishna he heard oh Krishna has killed Shushupal, Pondrak and uh, other demons 
So Shalva went to attack Dwarka in his airplane and he was bombing Dwarka, dropping huge boulders and trees and Dwarka was being devastated. Even Prajumna tried to fight with him but he got knocked unconscious in the battle and was taken from the battlefield by his chariot driver. Samba, Sanyak, Satyaki and other heroes were fighting. But it was a very difficult time and all the Dwarka was being smashed in this war. And the news came to Braja that Shalvar is destroying Dwarka and all bridge buses were... Uh, what will happen now to Krishna? They were in great anxiety. So at that time, Brenda Devi crying came to Purnamasi and said, Oh Bhagavati Yoga Maya, Purnamasi Devi, I think there's no hope. There's no hope at all now. What can we do? Purnamasi Devi was also crying. He said, Oh Brenda, I am lamenting so much that I have forgotten even my own body. I don't know what is going on right in front of me, let alone what is happening very far away. So what can I do? Then, Brinda Devi said, But Purnamasi, you are Yoga Maya, you are the Leela Shakti. You are managing all the Leelas of Krishna. If you don't know what's happening, then who knows what's happening? How is it possible that you don't know? Purnamasi Devi said, Oh Brinda, you are also the Leela Shakti. How is it possible that you don't know? You see, because Purnamasi Devi is the Leela Shakti of all the Rasas. But because she has the form of an elderly uh, ascetic, she cannot get, be very close to Radha Krishna in their romantic pastimes. So she's expanded as her Prakash is Brinda Devi. Brinda Devi is the Yoga Maya Leela Shakti specializing in Madhu Rasa. So Brinda Devi said, Oh Purnamasi Devi, if you don't know what is happening in Krishna's Leela, then who knows? How, do you, how is it that you don't know? And Purnamasi Devi said, you are also the Lili Shakti. How is it that you don't know? <laughs> Brenda Devi said, I don't know how I don't know. <laughs> how is it that you don't know? <laughs> so then Purnamasi Devi said, I don't know what will happen, but I know why I don't know what will happen. <laughs> then she quoted the verse of Srimad When Lord Brahma tried to steal the cows and boys, but first he tried to steal the cows. And the boys said, hey, where did our cows go? Krishna, you just stay here, take the picnic, I'll bring them back. And Krishna went to look for the cows, he couldn't find them. So then he came back to look for his boys. And when he got back to the, where the boys were, he couldn't find them either. Krishna, where are my friends? Why? Krishna had become bewildered by praying, by love, by the love of the boys. This is why he could not find them. So Purnamasi said, this frame of the big bridge buses is so powerful that it even covers Krishna's knowledge of what is going on. And because we have been associating very closely with these bridge buses by Sadhu Sangha, now we have become bewildered by frame. And even we don't know what is happening in Krishna's name. <laughs> so this is very significant. That even the Lila Shakti Yoga Maya, who is managing all the Lila, has no idea what is going to happen next because she has become bewildered by brain <laughs> Then Brenda Devi was crying. What will we do? Purnamasi Devi says, <clears throat> I was awake the whole night, weeping about the situation. And at the end of the night, one man in a disguise, I could not recognize who it was, he appeared and he gave me a book. 
and poor Masi took a book. He gave me this book and he said, study this very carefully. So then Purnamasi took the book and gave the book to Brinda Devi. She said, I've been, Purnamasi Devi said, I'm crying so much I cannot sing. So Brinda Devi, please read this book to me. Brinda Devi took the book. The letters in the book were shining like a Nilamani, blue sapphires, set in a golden page. It was covered with a pitambara golden cross and decorated with pearls and had an effulgence that was just like the effulgence of Krishna. On the front cover it said, deliberate deeply on the verses of Padma Purana which are in agreement with the verses of Srimad Bhagavatam. So then, Brenda Devi opened the book. Purnamasi Devi said, read, read, read to me. Brenda Devi began to read. It was some verses from Srimad Bhagavatam. The verses said, after the spaceship of Shalva and Shalva himself were destroyed by Krishna, then Shalva's friend Dantavakra became very angry and he went to Mathura. And then Krishna from uh, Dwarka, he went there to Mathura and he fought with Dantavakra and Vidurata. When he fought with Dantavakra, Krishna took his club and hit Dantavakra in the chest and Dantavakra died. And then Vidurata attacked Krishna and Krishna cut off the head of Vidurata with his chakra and then Krishna put down his weapons. It's very significant. That's the last time that Krishna killed any demons in his life. After that, Krishna never ever took a up a weapon for the rest of his life in this world. So then, after fighting with, with Dattavakra for many days and nights outside the gates of Mathura, killing him and Vidurata, Krishna went to Vishram Ghat. And he took bath there and he rested. Vishram Ghat is a place of resting. After Lord Varahadev killed Iranyaksha in Satyuga, then he rested at Vishram Ghat. In the Treta Yuga, during Lord Ram's Lila, when Shatubna killed Lavanasur, then he rested in Vishnu In Dwarpa Yuga, when Krishna killed Kamsa Maharaj, then he rested in Vishnu hmm? And in Kali Yuga, when Mahapu came to Brajamandal, he took bath and rested in Vishnu So just next to Vishnu is Mahapu where he rested. So, very important place. But now Krishna, just as when he just left Braj, he rested there. Now he's come back to Mathura and he again rested there. And then he heard the news that the bridge buses were just on the other side of the Jamuna, camping in the forest of Lohoban. When Brinda Devi and Purnamasi read uh, this verse describing the uh, fighting with Dandavata and Vidurata, then they wondered, oh, so Krishna will survive this battle. He will save the Yadus and he will come to Mathura. But will he come to Braj? Purnamasi Devi told Brinda Devi, read on, read on, read some more. <laughs> Aha! Here is a verse from the Padma Purana. 
Now Bhagavatam does not openly say, but Padma Purana said that after killing Dandavata and Vidurata, Krishna crossed over the Jamuna in his chariot and was reunited again with the Brajapasis. Uh, so when they read this, Purnamasya and Brindade were so astonished. Because now they're reading about the future from the point they are. Hmm? Brinda Devi said to Purnamasi, Oh, will Krishna really go back? Is it mentioned in Srimad Bhagavatam anywhere? Purnamasi Devi said, Read, read more. <laughs> then there were some verses from Srimad Bhagavatam. First canto, chapter 15. Yayam bujaksha pasasara bobavan Kurun madun bata suriti drikshaya In the first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam you see there's a pastime of Krishna coming from Astinapur and arriving in Dwarka and there some residents of Dwarka are saying Oh Krishna when you go far away O oh, lotus eyed Krishna, then we feel as, as if we are in the darkness. We have eyes, but with no sun. Without the sun, you cannot see. But in Vedic culture, the sun god also gives the power to the eye. So our eyes are as if there's no sun god. When you are not there, the whole world is empty for us. When you leave Dwarka and you go sometimes, Kurun Madun Bata Suri Didrikshaya. You go to see Kurun. Kurun means the Kurus. That is Yudhisthira Maharaj in Hastinapur. Eh? Madhun means the Yadavas. Where? In Madhupuri in Mathura. And uh, Surid, the Driksha. You go to see your Surid, your nearest and dearest ones, means the Vrajabhasis. So here, though in Srimad Bhagavatam, well, there's only the history how Krishna left Prandava and went to Mathura and Dwarka. And then the Krishna Lila ends. But there are hints here and there in Srimad Bhagavatam that Krishna actually does come back. So this is the first one in the first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. Kurun Madun Vata Surit Drikshaya. Because you can see Krishna uh, speaks uh, in Srimad Bhagavatam saying, I want to visit my Surit. He calls the bridge passes my Surit. So then Pranamas said, read more, read more. So then Brinda Devi was reading. Well, in Srimad Bhagavatam, when Krishna was being taken away by Ma to Mathura by Akrura, he sent a messenger to the gopis. I will return. So Krishna said he will return. It's there in Srimad Bhagavatam. After killing Kamsa Maharaj in Mathura, then Nanda Maharaj was camping in a circle of bullet carts just outside Mathura. And Krishna came to him. And Nanda Maharaj said, So can we go back now to Braja? Krishna said, Oh, if I go, then Balaram will come with me. But Balaram's father is Vasudev and he, Vasudev has never seen him before. So he's just meeting his son for the first time. And if I take him away now, Vasudev Maharaj will die. And I cannot leave Balaram here because if I leave Balaram, I will die. So it's better, oh Baba, Nanda Baba, you should go back to Braj and I'll stay with Balaram here for a few days and after we've satisfied the Yadus, we'll return. So again, Krishna has promised to return. Then, Brinda Devi read another verse. When Krishna sent Uddhav to Brindavan, just when he was leaving, hmm, he said, I am going now to Mathura, but when I get there, I will surely send Krishna. And Krishna has promised that he will come back to you very soon. Then, Panda Devi read another verse. When uh, Krishna was met with the gopis in Kurukshetra, Krishna said, Apis Bharata Nasakya Swanam Achati Kirshaya. Oh Radhika, oh Gopis, do you remember me? 
Radhika said, no, I am not like you. Do you can't sleep at night, tossing and turning in bed with a broken heart, remembering me 24 hours a day? Hmm? I am not like you. We are living in Vrindavan very happily, I never remember you. Chris said, oh, perhaps you think that I am ungrateful. But you should know that it is not my fault, that it is not due to my own arrangement that I have left. But rather, after killing Kamsa Maharaj, then all the demons in the world, they wanted to, all his associates wanted to kill me. And I couldn't go back to Vrindavan, because then they would attack Vrindavan, and it's just a village. It has no fortifications, no armies, no castles, no artillery, weapons or anything. So, after killing comes, I could not come back. Perhaps you are upset with me that I have married Rukmini and Satyabhama and then Nagnajiti and Mitravinda and Lakshmana and 16,108 queens. But I did it for you because I cannot return to Vrindavan until these demons have been killed. And these demons have very big armies. So to fight with them, I also need a big army. And in those days, how does a prince get a big army? By marrying a princess, then that king's armies become part of his army. So Krishna said, I will have married all of these princesses to make a big army to kill the demons so I could all come home and be with him. So don't be angry with me. So Swana Bhata Chikirsaya, I have to protect the Yadus from the attacks. That means the inner meaning, the Dwani of these words is, Oh Radhika, once I have saved the Yadus from the war with the demons, then I will be free and I must return to you. So in this way, again and again in Srimad Bhagavatam, just here and there, the hints have been given. And that is why at the end of the 10th canto, Shukadev Goswami says, Jai Ji Vaso Devaki Janma Vado Yadubara Parishat Swain Dovirasya Nadam Still Chaya Vidyanagata Susila Shimukena Braja Purabhantana this is the biggest clue. Jayati Jananivas, all glories to Krishna. Who's Jananivas? The opulent meaning is that he is Jana in all people, Nivas. He lives in the heart of everyone. He's Paramatma. Hmm? But the real meaning is Jayati Jananivas. Nija Jananivas. He lives with his own people. That means, oh, Krishna came back to Vrindavan. Devaki Janmavado. It's only a rumor that he's the son of Devaki. Really, he's the son of Yashoda. Yadubara Parishatswa Durvira Sandharma. Through his associates, he has killed all the demons who are promoting Adharma. And now, Stira Chada Pujina Gana Susmita Mukena. All moving and non-moving living entities who are Brijina, suffering in separation from him. Then, still the Chara Brijina Gana, he's destroyed all the suffering of separation of all the moving and non-moving living entities of Braja. Braja Pura Vanitana, Vadyan Kama Devam. Oh, glories to that Krishna who is Kama Dev, who is always increasing the love in the heart of Radhika and Prajagopis. So, Shukadeva Swami, at the end of the 10th canto, is giving this verse. It's a clue. Brinda Devi said to Purnamasi, Oh, Purnamasi Devi, but Srimad Bhagavatam is Grantaraj, the king of all scriptures. Why is it? That in the Padma Purana, it was openly said that Krishna has returned. But why is it that in Srimad Bhagavatam, it is not openly said, but is just scattered here and there in hints? So then Purnamasi Devi said, This is to cheat the materialistic persons. Those persons who want to pray to Krishna for wealth and name and fame, they should not know the confidential nature of his pastimes. And it is also there to bewilder the devotees. Brenda Devi said, Oh Purnamasi Devi, 
I understand that the materialist person should be cheated and bewildered. But why should the devotees be bewildered? Purnamasi Devi said, oh, this is very deep. You see, the devotees, when they read Sriman Bhagavatam, being absorbed in their Abhiman that I am a Brijabhasi. Understand? When we hear, when we chant, when we remember, when we worship the Srimad Bhagavatam by doing the Chidam Shilan of transcendental cultivation of relationship with Srimad Bhagavatam, it should always be done from the point, the perspective of our Sambandha Gyan, knowledge of our relation with Krishna. Mm -hmm. Aspiring to be a bridge basi from that perspective. So when they read, oh, Krishna has gone. And they're crying. He, is Krishna coming back? He said, Uddhav, when is Krishna coming? He said, Balaram, but when is Krishna coming? He, no, no, he's getting married. He's getting married again. And again. Yeah. And they're turning the pages one after another, looking, looking. When is he coming back? When is he coming? And then they get to the end of the tenth canto. <gasps> and they're dying. <laughs> and the mystery is this. That when praying is completely pervaded with uchkanta, longing, eagerness, it becomes calm. Hmm? That is gopi's love. The gopi's love, even when Krishna is in Brinda, is filled with Utkanta. It's Utkanta my praying. We have said that verse just now. Mora mani sani pati, sabapiti kori mati. Rather, he's saying, when I see Krishna's beauty, it's like ocean. I want to drink the whole ocean, but I cannot even get a drop. That's not only when Krishna is separated. Even when Radharani is with Krishna, she feels that she cannot even taste a single drop because of the utkanta, the intensity of her longing. Ye kale vasvapane dekinu bangsi badane se kala aritu vairi ananda amadan hari nil Brother Rani is crying. I have never seen Krishna. Even in my dreams I have never seen Krishna. Because every time Krishna came before me, then two enemies would come and block my vision. Ananda, that is joy, faint in ecstasy. And the mother, that is Cupid, making me more and more thirsty to serve him. And these two would come, and before my eyes could be filled with his beauty, they would steal my mind and I would faint. So I have never seen Krishna, either when I was awake or in my dreams. So this is the intensity of Gopi's praise. Therefore, the Srimad Bhagavatam, to give mercy to all the devotees, has described Krishna's Leela in such a way that he leaves, but does not openly. Hints are there, many hints we have shown. Uh, but does not directly say what the devotee wants to hear to increase Utkanta. Because when the love is infused with Utkanta, it becomes calm, that is Gopi Bhav, the brain of Prajagopis. Brenda Devi said, and read, huh? I'll read more. Purnamasi said, yes, yes. I want to hear, tell me more. What are the verses are in this astonishing granta? <laughs> With a very familiar effulgence. <laughs> she read <laughs> some verses. And Brinda Devi had a question in her mind. Will Krishna accept the practical peace as his beloved? Because in Vrindavan he was very shy. 
that the secret would come out and there would be a scandal all over the village. And when the gopis' brain became so high that they could not hide it anymore, that's why Krishna went to Mathura. All of these things, the killing of Kamsa, the attacks of Kali Yava, and uh, the Jarasandha, all of these, and moving to work on all of these things, they're actually like this. If a, a person is very shy, then they cover their limbs. Huh? They'll not be naked in front of anyone, they'll cover their limbs. Hmm? So because Krishna was feeling shyness, first shyness, that the gopis are loving him now with such an intensity, Krishna was ashamed. I cannot reciprocate. And second shyness, that now the frame of gopis has become out of control. They cannot hide it even from their relatives. So there will be a big scandal in Braj. So out of shyness, Krishna's limbs were covered by the situation of going to Mathura, going to Dwarka and all of these things. So the root of all the Leela is Krishna's praying, or rather Gopi's praying for Krishna, is the cause of all of this thing. But will the day come when Gopis have given up all shyness and accepted Krishna as their all in all? Will Krishna also abandon all shyness and not care what anyone thinks and accept the Gopis? Ponamasi Devi said, read. So then they were reading. Hmm? Purnamasi said, look, in Srimad Bhagavatam there's a verse that reveals that the gopis secretly see Krishna. You are my husband. Why? Gopias Kemachara Ayam Kosholam Smaveinur Damod Radara Sudam Api Gopikanam Gopis are saying, Oh, what austerities did Krishna's flute do in the previous life to be drinking the nectar of his lips? When that nectar belongs to us. Eh? Now, if there's a young man, the nectar of his lips belongs to whom? Only to his wife, not to anyone else. So here, the inner meaning of this verse, Api Gopi Kana, is that in their hearts, Gopis think, oh, we are the wives of Krishna, if the nectar of his lips belongs to us. Bonama said, said, read another verse. <laughs> so then, she read another verse. When Krishna, was in Mathura, he took the hand of Buddha in his hands and said, Gats to Dava Brajam Somya, Pritrona Pritimavaha, Gopi Namad Vyoga, Din Matsandesha Vimocha, go to Braja and pacify with sweet words my parents. And don't use your own words and intelligence to pacify the gopis. You cannot understand them. Just repeat my messages. I'm giving you these messages. Just repeat these messages to the gopis. Because if you try to pacify them yourself, you'll make things worse. Because you cannot understand them. Darayantati Krishchena Praya Pranam Kachanchana Mat Sandesha Pratyagamana Sandesha Balago Mei Madatmika so Krishna said to Uddhav, somehow or other, the gopis are holding on to their pran. Their pran is about to leave, they're about to die in separation. But the only way they hold on to their pran is Pratyagamana Sandesha, the message that I told them when I was leaving, I will return. Because I made this promise. So, Balavo me madat nekaha. Balavo means Cowherd women. But Balavo may Madatnika means they are my Atma, they are my soul. And if someone uses the word Balavo, you say, my, hmm, my Balavya. Then, that means my wife, actually. Just like a Brahmin. If you said, this is my Brahmini, it means his wife. So when Krishna says, Balavo may Madatnika, that means now, the Pramani is that Krishna thinks of Pratyagopis as his wives, even though they're not. That is only his heart feeling. 
So there was a praman from Gopi's Vainal Geet, how Gopi's feel towards Krishna. He is the praman from Udav Sandesh of the Bhagavatam that Krishna feels like that about Gopi's. Purnama Siddhartha said, read again. Because she cannot see, she's crying to him. So Brenda Devi is reading to him. Brenda Devi began to read. Api Bhattam Madhapuryam Arya Putro Dunaste Sparati Sopit Gehan Samya Bandang Stagopan Kwachita Vitsa Katana Kinkarinam Grinite Bhujam Aguru Sugandam Mordele Stakadano the last verse of Brahmargit. When Radharani was speaking to the bumblebee, these are her last words to that bumblebee. You see, Radharani had been criticizing Krishna and the bumblebee. Then the bumblebee flew away. Uh, then Radharani said, oh no, now he'll tell all the things I said about Krishna to Krishna. <laughs> and then she saw, and it was a, actually, a, it was probably another bumblebee. Our child said we don't know if it was the same bumblebee. It could have been a different one. But she thought it was the same one. And in her heart, because for Radharani, one moment in separation is like thousands of years. Even though it was only a moment later, she thought that the bumblebee had flown all the way to Mathura, told Krishna everything, and now the bumblebee had come back. Priyasakapuna Aga, Priyasa Prasito Kim. But this time she didn't say, Madhu Paketava Bando, mask, don't touch my feet, you drunken bee. This time she folded her hands and said, Priyasaka, oh my dear friend, you have returned. Please take a seat. How can I serve you? <laughs> she said, Apibata Matapuri Amari Bhutur Dhanaste. Now Krishna has just returned to Mathura. That means that Krishna had gone to Ujjain to study in the Gurukul of Santipani Muni for 64 hours, 64 days he learned, and he just come back to Matra and then sent Buddha. So Radhani said, Ariputta Adunaste, just now Krishna has come back to Matra. So Smarati Sapit Gayan, does he remember his, his uh, father's house in Nandagam? Does he remember his coward boyfriends? Hmm? And does he sometimes remember us? King Karinam Grihite, we gopis whom he accepted as his kinkuris. And will he come back just now? And with his lotus hand, which is fragrant with wood, with a guru. And will he come and place his hand up my head and say, I have been all over the world, I have seen so many beautiful and qualified women, but no one or anything like you, so now I have come back to be with you and I'll never go anywhere else ever again. Well, Krishna gives that kind of teaching to me. And when Radharani said this, she had the sport of Krishna coming and putting his hand on her head. Radharani fainted. So that was the end of Brahmani. No verse after that. It's the last verse. There are, not ten, there are ten verses of Brahmani in Srimad Bhagavatam, but actually Radharani spoke thousands of things, only ten of them came in. But that was the last one. So, Purnamasi Devi said, look, look at this verse. Radharani is addressing Krishna. How? Api hmm? Puriyam Aryaputra Adunaste. Aryaputra. What does it mean? Aryaputra means son of a nobleman. So a wife never takes the name of her husband. She calls him Aryaputra. So that Radharani is referring to Krishna's Aryaputra means in her heart she feels, you are my husband. But then, later in the verse, she says, He accepted us as his kinkari, his maidservants. So if there's an aristocratic person, when he gets married to his wife, there are so many... Uh, the, the father of the bride gives the bride to the, her husband along with several maidservants as well, who will serve uh, but the husband will also have rights on the, over the maidservants as well. So, uh, Radharani said he accepted us as his kinkari. 
But when the will of my Arya Putra accept me of more, as more than Kinkari, this is the inner meaning. Pranamasi is explaining this verse to Brinda Devi. So three verses of Srimad Bhagavatam, one from the gopis, one from Krishna and one from Radhika, that in their hearts this desire is there. Will we be together? Hmm? So then, hmm? Purnamasi was reading, hearing, sorry, from Brenda Devi. And Brenda Devi hmm? read the verse Jayati Jananiva So Deva Kija. Surely Krishna will come back soon. And in this way, Purnamasi Devi, she took the book, which because it had saved their lives. And she said, Oh, Brenda Devi, this is for you. And Brenda Devi took that book from Purnamasi. And she said, I will wear it forever as the jewel in a necklace around my neck. So, this is why Srimad Bhagavatam is very dear to the Vaishnavas. And the Rasik Vaishnavas, that they are wearing Srimad Bhagavatam as the jewel around their neck means that they always keep the Srimad Bhagavatam verses in their heart and when the mouth opens, they're jumping up. And the Vaishnava who is a living embodiment of Srimad Bhagavatam is called Mahabhagavata. And Bhagavatam has two aspects, Granta Bhagavat and Bhakta Bhagavat. Eka Bhagavata Bada Bhakti Rasa Shastra, Eka Bhagavata Bhakta Bhakti Rasa Patra. One Bhagavat is the Rasa Shastra Srimad Bhagavata, the other Bhagavat is the Rasa Patra, the receptacle overflowing with the transcendental Rasa of Srimad Bhagavata. So Maha Bhagavat means that person whose life is Srimad Bhagavata and who cannot live without Srimad Bhagavata. So you can see how the verses of Srimad Bhagavata keep even Purnamasi Devi and Brinda Devi alive. And Brinda Devi is wearing as a jewel around her In the meantime, you can imagine, if the Leela Shakti, who is supposed to be managing and knowing everything, is lost and crying like this and has to be saved by the verses of Srimad Bhagavatam, then Kim Uta, how much more can we say about the residents of Raja? So they were camping on the side of the road in Lower Valley. The messengers were not coming backwards and forwards and bringing news anymore. Why? Because Shalva was uh, smashing the Dwarka. And so the messengers stopped coming. And everyone was just crying. So they had no news. Where is Krishna? What is he doing? They didn't know that he'd come to Mathura and defeated Tantavarka and the Vidurata. They had no idea. They, and they were thinking that Mathura will be, sorry, Dwarka will be destroyed and this is the end of everything. So each bridge basi was meditating. How can I give up my life? One bridge basi was thinking, I'll jump from the top of Govardhan. Another bridge basi thought, I'll light a big fire in the forest and enter into the forest fire. Another bridge basi thought, I'll take a big sword and kill myself. Another bridge basi thought, oh, I should take some poison. Another bridge basi was thinking, I'll drown myself in the Jumuna. And just then, just as they were, they were deciding, each person was deciding how to give up their life, then one Brahmin priest came to Nanda Baba. He said, Oh Nanda Maharaj, don't forget. And he took a letter. He said, You have to read this letter from Krishna. Then the Maharaj said, yes, read it. And this was not a new letter, it was an old letter that Krishna had sent. Krishna said, Oh, Nanda Baba, I don't live in Dwarka. I don't live in Hastinapur, Indraprastha or any other place. 
I am living only in the letters of this page. So please, when you are feeling separation, you should fold this letter and always keep it in your pocket. And remember that I am with you and I never go anywhere. Krishna in the form of Akshar. Jaya Jaya Harinam Chidananda Mritadam Paratattva Aksharaya Kara Krishna exists eternally in the form of Aksha, the letters. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram So in the form of Aksha, Krishna, I am not any, I am with you in this form of Aksha, these letters. Keep me in your pocket always. So then, when Nanda Baba, he put the letter in his pocket, but still, he could not survive. Then he heard a sound. That is Sri Krishna's conch shell. They told her, could it be? Could it be that Krishna is coming? So then all those bridge buses, their cloth was old and torn and covered in dust. They were lean and thin. They look like old, they look like a prisoners from a concentration camp. With Jiva Swami said, just like a person who's been imprisoned by his enemy and starved in the jail. All the bridge buses look like that. But when they heard the sound of the conch, then they went running in the direction of the sound. They were running, running, running as fast as they could all the bridge passes. And as they were running, they saw in the distance the ground was shaking because a, a very powerful chariot was coming. And there was dust in the air. They couldn't see the chariot because of the dust. But as they were running, they saw the flag of the chariot sticking through the dust. And they looked on the flag. And what was on the flag? Garuda. So then they knew. Because who has Garuda on his flag? Sri Krishna. And when they saw Garuda on the flag, then they had the subject Bob Stamba. Stamba means to be stunned. So they were running, but suddenly they in ecstasy when they realized it was actually Krishna coming. And everyone was frozen. But they didn't know that they were frozen in their hearts. They were still running. They thought they were still running. But their bodies were frozen with the intense ecstasy of that realization. Krishna is coming home. So then their bodies, the different subject bombs came, they began to move and they ran in the direction of the chariot and Krishna jumped down from the chariot and all bridge passes surrounded him and Nanda Maharaj embraced his son and Madhya Shoda embraced Krishna and Krishna was crying. Jayati Janani Vaso Devaki Janmavado Yadupara Parishatsvaya Steer Chara Brijinagna The pain of separation of all moving and non-moving entities was destroyed. How? First of all, Nanda and Yashoda and the coward boys, they came and they jumped on Krishna and they were embracing him. And everyone was crying. And when the tears of the bridge basses sprinkled the earth, then the earth, which is all the trees had become dry, all the grass had become dry in Brajamandal. But by the touch of the tears,
tears of joy on the bridge buses, then the grass sprouted green from the ground again. And the flowers began to blossom on the trees, and the creepers everywhere, and Brindavan became beautiful, Brajmando became beautiful, Lohavan became beautiful. So then, the fragrance of Krishna was carried on the breeze to the distance. And who could smell the fragrance from far away? Golmata, the cows. And Krishna's cows, hundreds of thousands of cows from far away, smelled Krishna, Krishna's fragrance. And they were all lying on the ground, starving. But just like the bridge buses, they looked like they'd been in a prison camp. When they embraced Krishna, they all began shining and they had full healthy bodies. So in the same way, when the cows smelled Krishna's fragrance, they were all skinny but they became strong and fat again. And with milk dripping from their udders, they became galloping over the fields of bridge from all directions in the, di in the direction of Krishna. With their bells ringing and going, Humba, Humba, ooh, ooh. And when Krishna saw all his cows coming, he said, Oh, Gomata, Dandavat Pranam. And Krishna gave Dandavat, because cows are wishful, he's Gopal. And Krishna did Dandavat Pranam to all the cows. And all the cows came and surrounded Krishna and they were licking his body while he was giving Dandavat <laughs> So then, Krishna got up, and the deer in the forest, and the birds in the trees, and all the animals, and the butterflies, every insect also, in branch, everyone, the bumblebees would be rolling in the dust, crying. They all came back to life, and they all flew. They were flying around Krishna in the sky, and everyone was celebrating. It was a beautiful meeting. Understand? Kramam Anurasapuram Sudhavat Krishna Chandra Krishna is like a cook and the, each Leela is being added to the next Leela to the next Leela to the next Leela to the next Leela to, to make it more and more flavorful coming up to this point when Krishna after me, he's now Krishna re returned to Braj when he was 44 years old he left when he was 10 years old and 8 months and now he's 44 years old and he's just returned. How much separation was there? And how much joy the bridge buses feel. But only the bridge gopis. They were still married to others. What shall we do now? So what happened next? We'll explain at the Radastabi festival in Berlin. <laughs> So everyone must come um, two days before Radhastami, one day, two days, and then Radhastami. And then we'll be there a couple of days afterwards as well. We'll make a festival in Berlin. Watch on our Chaitanya Academy International Facebook page, on my Facebook page, on our website, Chaitanya.academy and other places. Give your emails to Nandikishore Prabhu if you want to get a personal notification. Twitter, Twitter and so on. But we'll be having some fest more festivals we're trying to arrange in Berlin, in Dijon, in Budapest, in Munich and many other places. So we just... Oh, Barcelona, Lat Latvia, Moscow, St. Petersburg, so somewhere around there. We will try to arrange many, many more festivals. So we'll be continuing the Qatar there. I just wanted to complete with that point. The speciality of Krishna's appearance in this world. Vaikuntande nahi yeye lila raprachar. Say, say, lila. Koribo Jate Mori Chamatka. I am doing my Aprakat Leela in the spiritual world and it's beautiful. But when I come here, I will do such a Leela that even I am amazed. Krishna said, because of these four specialities, Janma Leela, Aswar Bad, the weddings, the marriages of the gopis, and finally the Gaman, a Gaman Leela, the going and then returning. Because 
Kramam Anurasa Puram by the sequence of pastimes the rest becomes complete. Sudhava Krishna Chandraha because Krishna Chandra is like a cook. He's Rasik Shekhar and his Lila is the in this way in this world manifests so many beautiful varieties of Rasa. See Krishna Chandra Sri Mahasu Mahamosavaki Jai Jai Sri Ram Jai Jai Sri Ram